This program is brought to you by the friends and partners of Biblical Life TV. Deep waters to nurture and empower the remnant for the last days. There is a power that is about ready to be released from heaven to those that seek after the things of the kingdom of God. When it comes to the Word of God, there is a supernatural unction of the Holy Spirit to learn. God is up to something for those that will study to show yourself approved. Right now there's a lot of things in the kingdom that God is trying to establish that goes against people's theology. You need to understand your roots, where you came from. God may require us to change what we're doing to make walking in the kingdom a higher priority than it ever was before. We were never called to have a little light. We were called to be ablaze with the fire of God in this generation. Join the remnant from around the world who are empowered by the Word of God to fulfill God's purpose in these last days. God is speaking something different. That is going to be essential in the days ahead, and that's part of this anointing that we have to have. Prepare yourselves for Spirit-filled teaching. Biblical Life TV. One. Hello, Rims of the Most High God. And welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon is growing all over the world. This is episode number 457. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hi, guys. We sure miss seeing all the folks that come to our conferences. A uh, little update on the road situation is they haven't even started yet. Uh, the last that we heard is they were putting a roundabout down in Seymour, Missouri, which is just down the road where we have our other building. And there's a man that um, has a towing, a, company. a towing company that because of that, he wasn't going to be able to get the semis around there. So they have to redo that. We haven't had it, heard anything else since then. But we sure miss seeing yeah. all the kids and giving you hugs. and um, So we're just trusting God, and he's going to show us what to do. Well, it's the, anytime that you deal with the government, it's like, we can start at any minute, but it may be a while. Oh. <laughs> and so... Well, if you um, continue to keep praying for our prayer list, John has been at uh, St. Jude again to get that, that follow-up. Everything's going fine there. Just continue to pray for his immune system and for Troy's immune system, uh, for Terry's immune system. We're just asking that uh, God will rebuild their immune system as they take the therapy. Um, and God's, God's getting ready to move mightily. You know, we've heard from a lot of people that are having struggles with their finances. Actually, people are struggling in every area. I, I mean, there's never been an onslaught like this. But I honestly believe, guys, it's because we're getting ready to come out of a Babylonian system. I think, it's, I think it may be next year. I'm looking up some articles to try to determine when I think this, this started. I think it may have been in 55. Uh, some contract, some covenant that was made that put us in a Babylonian system for 70 years. And I think that may be up next year. Um, if that's the case, then that explains why Satan is just on a rampage. And I've thought that for a while is because um, he knows who's a threat to him. He knows who the people that have mm. the gifts, the people that uh, are prayer warriors. And so he's really attacking right now. But I just encourage you, just hang on. And we pray that God would bring help. He knows exactly what you need. He knows exactly how to get it to you. And we are praying for you. We're praying every time somebody sends us a prayer request, we put that before the Lord yeah. and, and ask for his help. You know, one of the things I've been saying for years, that uh, historically you can see where uh, there's revival, that iniquity goes down, and it kind of goes you know, back and forth throughout history. I think as we, we approach the, the final conflict, if you will, they're both going to go like this. They're both, so we're, we're seeing a revival of occultism uh, in America like never before, and, and in finances and stuff, but at the same time, God is moving among his people. One of the, uh, I found this very encouraging. It was an article with a prophecy in the news. 
and it, many religious revival among young American men as women become more liberal. And it says, for the first time in American hist modern American history, young men are becoming more religious than their female peers. This shift noted recently by the New York Times marks a striking reversal of long-standing trends where women traditionally led the way in religious uh, commitment. Men now attend services more often with a 3% over the last 25 years, and they're more likely to identify as religious than young women. And uh, he also quotes a, a professor at Eastern Illinois University says, we've never seen this before. That's encouraging. And so uh, they're even marking where there's, there's more uh, just uh, meetings where we know, we know of, of uh, religious leaders, or we have Christian leaders that are just holding men's meetings mm -hmm. and that they're actually having to uh, build onto their ministry just to be able to accommodate this. So there's, there's a hunger and I, I think a camaraderie uh, a, a brotherhood being built of, of young believers that's saying, listen, we don't like the materialism, we don't like the way things are going, and so God is stirring up this younger generation because the men are the builders. Well, it's, it's a God-given um, need for men to gather together. They yeah. call it yeshivas, right? And, yeah. uh, and I think that's why Satan has been working to get groups like Freemasons, Oddfellows, things that he could yoke men to so he could adversely affect them in their families. Um, and that's, I want to encourage you about this. You know, it looks like this has to be the end because you're just seeing everything go crazy. And the truth of it is there's not anything I'm seeing that I didn't see years ago. All my memories, you know, I, I would have a memory come up of something I was shown, something, and I'd tell Michael, <clears throat> I'd say, I know this sounds so insane, but even things that, um, you know, pharmaceuticals and things like that, they were telling program multiples way back when. The reason that they showed you everything they were doing was to show you their... Um, their great power, that there's nothing can stop them. And, you know, they just give you one example after another. And so what you see coming out right now has been going on for decades. You know, everybody thinks, okay, this has got to be going into the tribulation. This has got to be because of, of these things have never been before. No, what's happened is God had his people pray that the hidden would be revealed. The human trafficking, these horrible satanic rituals, all these things have been going on for decades, guys. Yes. It's just nobody saw them. God's brought it to the surface so his people can raise up and pray. And so when, um, in my opinion, we're getting ready to come out of 70 years of a Babylonian system where everybody's been slaves. Didn't know it, but they've been slaves. Um, and they just, they just worked just like puppets, essentially. You know, some people, they actually programmed, and then they uh, figured out they could do it without, um, you know, all of the, the oh. trauma and programming. They just figured out how to do it through the TV and things like that. So one of the reasons that I think um, God gets us the information, and I have so many people send me clips, and I'm thankful for that because I, eventually I'll make my way down through all of them. Uh, but but things that people send us have filled in gaps for me. Like like I would I would tell Mike something many years ago, and then I'll say, see see look that it's true. <laughs> and so um, I, I'm probably not as alarmed as most people right now uh, because I, God didn't show us this for no reason. And you know when there was captivity in the Bible, when they were in Egypt, when they were in Babylon, look at what happened when they, they came out. Look at the miracles that God did. That's why I, I believe God's going to restore our health. Everything that's been stolen from us, I believe God's going to restore so that we can finish what, however long we have here with the power of God flowing through us. Um, and one of the, we found out a new thing. Uh, Mike came across a book it was so interested in. And you want to talk about that, and then I can add my... Yeah. You know, I get I get a lot of different books and a lot of things kind of come my way, but it's like the Holy Spirit prompts you. Mm -hmm. And this one caught my attention. It's called The Nephilim Look Like Clowns. And uh, several things that this guy has done, he has looked anthropologically uh, over all, all civilizations, that they would have their shamans uh, dress up, and they were supposed to represent the demon that they were supposed to channel. Mm -hmm. And the only place that we don't, and, and, and that, you know, when the, when the, and that would attract that demon for them to channel. 
And then people would allow it to have certain whatever physical sensations it wanted, whether it was drink or whatever. And then it would give them information, it would give them power. And that, that is universal in all cultures. Although in the Western world, and they think, and you know, part of it can be because of the Catholic Church, they kind of reversed it where they, uh, they think that if you dress like a demon, then you can scare it away. Well, you know, demons aren't going to, when they look in the mirror, they're, they're not going to. What they don't realize is they become an icon. And he looks at the development of what became what we know as clowns in the Western world. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to 19, or 1790. But the, uh, the guy that uh, was behind it, the promoter, the guy that dressed as the clown, uh, him and his father both were Freemasons, and they had done a lot of stuff in India. I, and, and so they modeled the clown after the, the representation of the Nephilim out of India. Well, he starts out in his testimony saying how he was lost and he was into drugs. And I think it was DMT is what he used, and, he, and, and you'd go on these trips, and he said um, that the, the thing after he got saved those things would, would come to him, and he said that he couldn't figure out why they looked like clowns. Yeah, they looked like clowns or jesters. And then, and so um, he did research. He did research, but he was also talking to a lot of them throughout Europe that were doing the same thing, and they were seeing the same thing. Now, what's one of the things that was kind of crazy to me is in Europe they're seeing clowns and jesters when they do DMT, which is known as the spiritual molecule. Mm -hmm. It's in the uh, peyote and all the stuff the Indians use to see into the spirit realm. In America, when they when they did those experiments, they all saw the gray aliens, and I, I think I think they're just different segments of of the same spirit world. Uh, it could be um, interesting though. Like when I looked up uh, Joey Grimaldi, then it it said on there that they didn't have proof that he was a Freemason. Well, I I found it. It's in a Masonic periodical really old thing that I that I found but it lists that he joined the lodge and so he was and so um, and so was his backer that ran all that and then then when, then when you look at um, all the circuses were started by Freemasons and and from what he has shared in his research if I'm remembering correctly and you correct me if I'm wrong that uh, all the clown societies are, are run by Shriners there's always a connection with the Shriners well, on the a, Shriner side. There's a Royal Order of Jesters. It's a Masonic male fraternal organization allowing only Shriners in good standing to join. Um, it's, this is one of the higher levels, I think, that it's, it's probably harder the, to get into. Which is above the Clown Society. Um, oddly enough, years ago when I was praying with a uh, mind control victim that's a descendant of Freemasonry, I kept seeing... I kept telling him, I keep seeing a jester. Um, I didn't know anything about this, but I was just pleading the blood of Jesus into anything connected to that I could think of. But I sure didn't, I didn't know this. Um, he was saying, though, because it's like an icon, that if the people that follow that, he believes there's a connection to the Nephilim. Probably kind of why we most people kind of get the creeps. About clowns. <laughs> you know, about clowns. I've never liked them. Um, well, one of the things I found fascinating was like how the, the clown has the, the large mouth and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, he goes back and many of, and I don't know if all the watchers were, but many of the watchers were seraphim. So they were, they were dragons, they were serpent. They could, and one of the things in, in my own research, and I document in my books that like when Kwadi Kwazo de Metakuru uh, in America, in the Americas would, would appear to the indigenous Indians, he, would, he was known as the, the winged plume serpent, but he could also take the form of a white man. So he, he could take human form, and that's one of the reasons that the Aztecs and the Mayans so quickly surrendered to the Spaniards when they came, because they were white guys, and they thought they were the servants of a Metakuru, okay? And so these things can take human form, but he documents that maybe the first line Nephilim, especially from those that were seraphim, were serpent-like, where they would have had the large mouths, they would have had the slit eyes, and most clowns you'll see that have the line mm -hmm. down, right down their eyes. That represents the, the, uh, the serpentine type of eyes. And I think what concerns me about all this, and we can, uh, and I think there were more than just the serpentine type of, of Nephilim, 
But what concerns me is when you look historically at the anthropology, except in the Western world, when you dress like that, that's inviting that spirit in. Well, it's, and it's so like it becomes an else. open door. I think, I think the Nephilim have always wanted us to look like them. They're trying to, to mar God's image in us. Uh, that's why a lot of times when you see there, there's very dramatic tattoos um, that just look like to me like that would have been something that they would have had to, had the people do because they, they want them to worship them. They want to, them to, you know, it's like if you have an idol, you'll, you'll mimic them. Yeah. Um, you know, and I've wondered, you know, the enemy always looks for an open door. And here in our society, although all clowns are mischievous, they're the, they're the troublemakers, they're the jesters, they're the, that type of thing. Um, one of the things I have found with the enemy, it's like the moment that you open the door now for a shaman, they're opening the door for a specific thing, for that thing to come in, to give them information, to give them power, or even the entire community. Um, but for someone who doesn't necessarily know and they, they dress that way, or even, you know, kids putting on clown makeup for Halloween and stuff, that spirit says, you just wore my icon. I'm going to put that in the bank. And I'm going to wait till later on to strategically begin to influence you without you knowing it because you opened a door that you weren't aware of. And, and could that be part of, the, of what Satan uses on Halloween? Oh, absolutely. You know, I was trying to think back. I remember one year I dressed up like a, what they used to call a hobo with patches and things like that. And I've tried to remember, did I paint my face? I can't, I couldn't remember, but I prayed over it. I know that Stephanie, when we were going to an Assembly of God church, they had uh, youth leaders that dressed up as clowns and did kids ministry. And she said, uh, and I didn't remember this, but she said she went with her best friend with them to a nursing home one time to entertain uh, the people that were there. So we prayed over that. I remembered that I'd bought her when she was, I think it was on her first Christmas. I got her a jack-in-the-box that was a clown. Um, I think I think Lisa had, I think your mom bought Lisa a clown doll one time. So those are the things that I've just looked back on. You know, most people that dress up like clowns and things like that, they, they are no way trying to be evil. I think it's just something that it gets in our society. We get used to it. But that's exactly what Satan wants to do. He wants to, us to open a door. Well, um, don't you think in Western society what he has learned to do is he has made these things look good uh, on the surface? so that it opens the door because we have been so uh, over the midst of time we have lost uh, the inherent knowledge that we used to have as a culture that these things were bad mm -hmm. um, i remember when and it, it was a um, prophecy club watchers with al neal and had great information but listening to him was like listening to paint dry i mean it was but it was awesome information he does this one quote and it was from a philosopher that that modern man looks at symbolism, and symbolism is going to play into some of the other things we're going to talk about today, that different symbols and things, because it projects things in, in the unconscious mind and, mm -hmm. and, and so forth. He said that it is a part of the modern world that men in medieval times, if they would have seen them, they would have ran in terror because they know exactly what they mean. And we have lost the oh. meaning of those. And what we have is advertising agencies uh, and, and the occult are constantly putting it in our face uh, to the place that we, we accept it as normal, not really realizing that those symbols are icons mm -hmm. that open up gateways into the soul. Well, I believe in it. And so it's, it's worth praying about, guys. It's, it, it's just one it's, of those it's, things. It's a great read. I mean, he written, this is just the first volume, just dealing with the history of this and it, it's it's a great tome to to put into your library. So if you know if you've ever dressed up like one on Halloween or you know uh you remember like the Shriners they they'll dress up like clowns a lot and ride their little vehicles around and things like that. It's all all part of the facade that Satan presents before us that oh isn't this cute isn't this nice. Um and actually I think I think they the the clown stuff started really showing what it really was yep. 
and since, was it 2016, they started having those weird showings of uh, like a clown would just, a creepy clown show up somewhere and they'd have it on the news. And then they had that, that it that had that horrible look and, and there's something about the white painting the face white too. And I think that's why I've always felt funny about mimes you know, that, that do the hand gestures. And they're gestures. kind of linked to this, too. Uh, and so it's it's worth praying about because we're in a time when if there's a door there, then the enemy's going to use it. Well, I, th I think what God is doing, for him to have the last great revival that he needs, he's revealing all the tactics of the enemy so that we can close the doors. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I think there's just a lot of things uh, that God is revealing in this day. We're, we're finding out like with mind control uh, because of MKUltra. They, the, the technologies that they learned now permeate everything. It's, mm -hmm. it's mass control. But um, we, can, we can come out of it though is what, I, what I'm telling yeah. you. The hope is, you know, when you hear stuff like we're going to talk about, you'll go, oh no. The truth is it's been going on a long time. Been Back 30 forever. years ago when everything started coming forward and I started seeing all this, I started praying over our bodies. Mm -hmm. I started saying, Father, anything that's been put in us is not supposed to be there. I ask you to get us back to original design that you would expel things from our body. Um, I had a, a, a memory of when I uh, had my tube side after I had our youngest daughter. And that, I mean, the memory came up and I didn't remember it at the time of the surgery. But it went along with what I did see because the next morning when that doctor came to check on me, he wouldn't even walk over to my bed. He was shaken. He was like he was scared to death and he wouldn't even walk over to my bed. And, and I was never the same after that surgery. I mean, my whole body went wacko. Um, and so there's all kinds of things been done, but God's in the restoration business. And I always go back to when they came out of Egypt 400 some years of, of slavery and all that. The, can you imagine what those men that did that constant work, what shape their bodies were in, their joints? And just think, they, they were able, they walked out of there. Yeah, the, the Bible <laughs> says in the book of Psalms them. there wasn't a single feeble one among them, so even the old guys, the, the right. old people were strengthened, and, which gives us hope. <laughs> and they also came out with finances. <clears throat> yes. So if you're in a position and, and you're just thinking, man, Satan's stolen our money, we're just in bad shape, then then believe like I do that we're going to have a period of time, I don't know how long it is, but a period of time where God's going to say, watch this world. You think the world can, can provide for you. You think the world can offer you anything. You watch what I'm going to do for my covenant keepers. Yeah. You know, I, I'm constantly going back every time that... Uh, I began studying and just really praying about what you know God's wanted me to write about. He always takes me back to Revelation, where it says you know to come out of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Now there's there's two ways of looking at that because I understand mystery Babylon emanated from the United States. I think because of Freemasonry primarily, uh, but it's also a global phenomenon. And so you know where you, where you're going to go, you can't go to Antarctica because we it's probably the where the uh, where the watchers are right now and stuff. Where where can you go? Uh, I look at it first as that may be the harpazo, the rapture, and we get to that place. God is saying, I'm getting ready to take Babylon down, come on up here. But I, I think the, that before then, he's got to separate our hearts from Babylon. It's, it's mm -hmm. like when Moses first went down right. to Egypt and began giving them hope, the, 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 all the things that, that Moses was doing and the, uh, the plagues that he poured out was judging the gods of Egypt. Uh, as well as stripping the wealth that they had gotten off the backs of God's people. At the same time, I think everything that he was doing was beginning to turn the hearts of the people from Egypt to God. And uh, we, we see the same thing uh, with Nehemiah and them as, as the, the Jewish people were coming out of Babylon. And before we, before we can have the harpazo or the rapture, God's got to separate us from Babylon now. Right. He, he, and so part the of this. The not going to be ready. You he, know, we can't have yeah. a, a pagan Babylonian bride. <laughs> He's coming back for a bride without spot and a wrinkle or any mm -hmm. such thing. And so there's going to be this separation, this, this, this cutting off of Babylon to where we can be like Daniel. And Daniel always fascinates me, Mary, because he 
was in Babylon. He thrived in Babylon, but he never let Babylon control him. Mm -hmm. He walked with God no matter what. And, well, and he I, understood Babylon. Yes, I mean, he, he did. understood exactly what was going on. We are at a disadvantage because we haven't had the knowledge. And because of that, um, my people perish because of lack right. of knowledge. And we've seen a lot that Satan's got done. But there's a reason that God's revealing all this. If it was just at the end and we just say, okay, there's nothing we can do. Let's just sit down and wait for the, the bomb to go off. And there's a purpose in why God's revealing everything he is. And so we have to plan for what God's going to do. We're supposed to occupy till mm -hmm. Christ comes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even when he, he talks about the harpout, so one is in the field, one's taken, one is left. Mary, they're in the field working. They're not wandering and want, waiting for him to come back. They're not in a bomb shelter someplace. Mm -hmm. All of us have a task to do in the kingdom, and we're only going to be as functional uh, to the same proportion that we get free of Babylon and we learn to move in kingdom. You know, the body is meant to flow together. And I've always thought that through the abortions, there's no telling the, the people that had giftings, Satan made sure that they didn't make it. I think he sees it, I think he knows it, and he goes to work to see if those babies would be aborted. And, and if you ever hear of a prophet, most of the time he tries to kill you in the womb. You'll be born with the cord wrapped around your neck or something. And so we're going to see uh, this younger generation, these, these ones that are coming up that are on fire for God, we're going to see very um, powerful gifts that God's going to use through them. I think that we, we need them. There are people that have just uh, the ability to pray for people and they're healed. Mm -hmm. You know, the prophetic needs to be refined. because we're, we've, we're going we're to see the true prophetic, which is going to be in stark contrast to the craziness that's going right. on now. Because we're, how many times have we said in the last 30 years, this is like clowns. Yes. This is like clowns. Well, if I had a dollar for every time we said it, I could take everybody to Red Lobster. You know? <laughs> well, we wouldn't want to go there, probably. Or to a good steakhouse. Um, but I, I think we're going to see the rising of the true apostolic, which will be in stark contrast to what we see now. Um, and I, I think part of it is, is the, a true servant's heart that we're going to return to being bond servants in the kingdom. It's about mm -hmm. what the king wants. It's not about our fame, uh, us receiving accolades. It's about getting the mission done because the, an, an apostle means one sent. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, not, it's not something new to the New Testament. Uh, Hebraically, Moses was the first apostle. He was sent, down, he was sent into Egypt to deliver God's people out. And, and apostles are about mission. And, I, and I, I think that uh, prophets are about message. Mm -hmm. And whatever they got to do to get the message out, it's not about them, it's about the message. For an apostle, it's not about them, it's about the mission. And they'll sacrifice to get the mission done. Well, and you know, I think what we're going to see is uh, uh, the, the younger generations that God's raising up right now, they're going to learn that you have to view yourself as a servant. Yes. Everybody puts significance on it. You've got to have this title and this. You have to view yourself as a servant. That's why I enjoy at the conferences. I've been working to try to get out of the kitchen more so I can talk to people. But there's nothing that I enjoy more than going around pouring tea for people. And uh, Well, you were so busy serving, you didn't have a chance to go out and meet everybody because you were making well, sure everybody had food. But, but I mean, there, I've always felt like that. I feel like if you're in the ministry, you need to serve. Yeah. And, and good news, I think that this was more than a political scheme where President Trump served at McDonald's. He actually fried those fries. And, and sometimes a thing like that can have a bigger meaning than you know. Yeah. And I, I, there was an interview on Fox, and it was, it's a, uh, a black comedian. He has a big beard. I, I've seen him a couple of times on several shows. And he sat down with them, and he had page after page after page where Trump found out there was a need and he'd write a check or he'd get somebody a house. Or, uh, I, re I remember years ago when, when you know, we had a uh, campus in New York and, and uh, I always hear about, boy, if you get a family member working and he may start as a janitor. And there was one story about this kid got on as a janitor and Trump said, you're far too talented and, and paid for his college and they ended up hiring him. 
uh, the, the Trumps, there, there's a history of this that's multi-generational mm-hmm. uh, of them actually caring about people. This whole thing about him being for himself is, is a political lie to paint somebody. Mm-hmm. And, and, and isn't that what Hollywood does? Yeah, this is, this is more than controlled opposition when you have all the demonically possessed people despise you. Or all the witches on the planet gather together unified to curse you. Right. Yep. Um, so that's, that's my take on him serving up the fries. <laughs> uh, but one of the other things uh, that we wanted to talk about, my good friend Michelle sent me a link uh, uh, to a video of Bill Sneblin, and he was talking about teratomatic black magic. I actually think this is what I was shown years ago. Um, it's wicked magical technology. Yes. And it was started um, by a man named Austin O'Spare. And he was an Englishman that was interested in Ali Esther Crowley's work. And Ali Esther Crowley dismissed him because um, he was just into black magic, so they say. And it says that uh, he was uh, 1886 to 1956. <coughs> Excuse me. He was an English artist and occultist who worked in both as both a draftsman and a painter. He was influenced by symbolism and art nouveau. His art was known for its clear use of line and its depiction of monstrous and sexual imagery. In an occult capacity, he developed magical techniques, including automatic writing, automatic drawing, and sigilization which is the use of symbols, based on his theories of the relationship between the conscious and unconscious self. And I also wanted to read, um, Spare's spiritual legacy, legacy was largely maintained by his friend, the Thelemite, and that's from, uh, you've talked about Thelema before, mm-hmm. um, author Kenneth Grant, in the latter part of the 20th century, and his beliefs regarding sigils, the symbols, provided a key influence on the chaos, Chaos Magic Movement, and the The Temple of Psychic Youth, Spare's art once more began to receive attention in the 1970s. You know, when, when you look at that, uh, that, that is actually Ali Esther Crowley's group, Thelema. Uh, he was also involved in, in several other organizations. I, I did a little bit more research. And one of the things Bill Snevelin brings out, he was involved in what was called Crawling Chaos. And he was one of the, the, the uh, he helped develop, among others, uh, chaos magic. But the thing that I, I think that uh, when, when you look at his artwork, it was, uh, one, one, the monstrous constantly came to, to mind, but also the grotesque. The, the, it was sexual, but it was also grotesque and monstrous. And Bill connects him to this uh, teratomatic black magic. And the premise behind it and uh, one of the things that he also brings out, there's, there's something called predictive programming that the, those in the occult do believe in karma. And they, they've got a really weird sense of it. You know, on one appearance, it's like they have no boundaries or anything else, but they, they, all, they, all, they have their own ethics. It, it may be a weird kind of twisted ethic, but there's like ethics. like the mafia. <laughs> but they do believe in karma that they, they're going to tell you what they're going to do before they do it. And if they get a lot of public pushback, then they, they kind of hold off until they prepare the populace for what they're going to do. And they'll put it in B-movies. They're not going to put it in, in something that, you know, really big actors are, are in or anything. They'll put it in B and C movies. Uh, and there was one back in the, was it, 70s or 80s called Videodrome, which was a horrible movie. Uh, but the premise... I didn't see that one, oddly uh, enough. <laughs> but the, the premise of it... Uh, was that uh, there was a signal embedded uh, in, uh, in masochism. There were videos of masochism, pornography, and this type of thing. There was a uh, signal in that, and that signal would cause tumors on the nervous system in the brain that would cause people uh, to lose all morality, that they would kill people without notice, and, and just all these crazy things. And, and Bill believes it was... It was the predictive programming of what they're doing with this tarotomatic black magic, that there's signals in a lot of things that are, are being 
populated right now. And in, in fact, if you, if you look as far as web traffic, over half the web traffic of all the people in the world using the internet, and I mean, you use it for business and commerce and everything else. And so that's a massive amount of traffic. Over half of it is to pornography sites. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting in the movie, they use pornography as a carrier wave. And uh, uh, Dr. Snebelin lists three things, hallucinogenic drugs, porn, and, and even the jabs uh, can be used to help promote this. And it's to create, uh, coupled with the black magic, and what, what's interesting is this branch of black magic is growing in leaps and bounds right now. So we have many, many practitioners that are going through rituals to empower this. Plus, they'd have to have scientists involved in it. Yes. It, it couldn't just be that alone. It's like the techno sorcery you've always talked about. Absolutely. And uh, I looked up teratoma. Um, it says it's a rare type of germ cell tumor that may contain immature or fully formed tissue including teeth, hair, bone, and muscle. Most teratomas are benign, which is non-cancerous, but they can be malignant, which is cancerous. Treatment involves surgical removal. Cancer, cancerous teratomas may require chemotherapy, radiation therapy, or other cancer treatments. Then it also says that um, germ cells are the only cells in your body that can turn into many other types of cells. So when a tumor starts in your germ cells, it can turn into different types of tissue. This means teratomas can contain fragments of any body part. Um, hair, fat, muscle, liver, lungs, brain, thyroid. Uh, it even it says that uh, Teratoma might sound like something out of a sci-fi movie, but they're really just a result of germ cells going rogue. Well, isn't that what Satan wants to do? He wa mm -hmm. He's trying to mar God's image in us. He wants us to change. He wants our cells to go rogue. Teratomas are rare, so finding out you have one can feel scary. They usually aren't cancerous, and then says to go to your doctor. And what the thing that I could connect to uh, in my real, my day-to-day -day memories um, that actually connects to something that I remembered <clears throat> as I was getting healed. But there was a woman that I went to church with, and I didn't talk to her. Someone just told me about it. They said that she had, obviously, one of these. I had never heard of it. And they said that within this tumor was hair and teeth, and I... And so now, you know, that's not a pretty picture by any means, but it was one of those, like used to when I would see a person with a missing limb, I would have an unbelievable reaction. Um, one time we went to my niece's college graduation, I believe is where this was at, and we walked in, and now if I could prepare myself, I could grab a hold of it, but I looked over and there was a woman to my side in a wheelchair that had no legs. And so we had to go downstairs, and it was all I could do to hang on to my, when I would see that, because of something that I saw when I was a kid, traumatic thing that they used, the, the room would spin. I mean, it was like I couldn't even hardly, and you get so sick. When they described this to me, back at that church, they were just telling me what happened, I did the same thing. I had the same reaction to where I thought, okay, I'm going to just slowly, I didn't want anybody to know these reactions I was at, so I slowly made my way over and sat, sat down. But when I have those, it's directly connected to something they've shown me. And I think it's why I've always um, been so probably uh, phobic, would look to somebody else about doctors, about, <coughs> excuse me, I still have my my sinus problems with the ragweed. But we're, I think we're coming close to having a a full freeze, aren't we? Where everything clears out. Every the time air. it starts to get cool, it warms <coughs> back up again, and we're back in a, a warming period, Sorry. which is crazy. Um, but you know, I, I think one of the things that they're trying to do with this is because there had there you you can even go back to the development of modern medicine. Uh, goes back to Rockefeller, which is one of the Illuminati bloodlines that uh, everything was, all the drugs were going to be petroleum-based, they were going to be synthetic. Um, <clears throat> so there was, there's, there's this kind of unholy union uh, with the occult, <clears throat> whether most doctors know it or not. And so 
there are, I think there are things they're putting in the food. There are things they're putting uh, in the water. There are things, I, I think that's one of the reasons personally that they're, they're trying to run Berkey out of business because I think the silver that was in the, uh, uh, the filters was doing something they didn't want. Mm -hmm. And so they classified silver as a pesticide, even though there's nothing else in the world that classified oh, as Oh, how many supplement companies have they, have they taken down? Yeah. I mean, they, they don't want us to be healthy. That's why I know God's getting ready to really get us to healthy states if we'll, if we'll yeah. work with him on <laughs> eating the right things. But I, I think what this, this tarotomatic black magic's doing, it's, it's causing micro tumors on the nervous system and in the brain to replicate what we saw in Genesis 6, that men's hearts became evil continually. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that we have been praying for uh, for a long time is God, bring us back to original design. Uh, we curse, we curse cancer daily. We, right. we command any tumors to dissolve and leave our bodies. Uh, we ask that God would purify the food and water. I mean, I don't... Uh, I don't take a supplement or a medication or anything that I don't pray over first. Any food we pray oh, over. Oh, for sure. And, and even our um, menorah here, one of the things that we do differently than a lot of the Hebrew roots is we don't go with all the symbols. I, we, I don't put a, what they call a Star David, a hexagram on anything. We always make sure that our menorahs, uh, don't have symbols on them. When we do uh, the feasts, we don't put symbols there. The only thing we use is the menorah. And this, I looked at some of these uh, sigils that this Austin Spare made. It looks like a lot of things they put on tattoos. So, so imagine that. Like, you know, we've got, I'm going to do a, a, one of our podcasts on... Um, Parasites, because I think it's it's significant, and uh, I've had some friends send some really good um, links to to videos about that, and and I, I we need to gather some more stuff. But just think about this: if they could get in an injection a minuscule star, David, a minuscule pentagram, like you know, they can get things now down far below a pinpoint <laughs> and so if they could get that injected in us if they could get something in the air that you breathe in anything to make a point of contact and and i saw this firsthand when the witches were after our family that's why i knew man we got something going on with our flag uh they would it was like they would drape themselves in it they were using those stars um you know, and I've told you before, Betsy Ross was married to a, a Freemason. I, I'm not saying that these people that have done some of these things are bad people. I'm just saying the Freemason connection to the Nephilim, to these high-level entities, it's just permeated everything. And they just made everything look, they dressed it up, made it look okay. And so when we do... Um, when we do our, our feasts and things, you won't see a Star of David. You aren't going to see a star on anything. Now, I won't have a Talit with a Star of David on it. No, there's, a, I mean, and that's, you know, that's, that's the problem that I think Israel has is because they're, they're, there's a Star of David on everything. I, I don't believe it's from God at all. I don't. Um, and so those are the kind of things that you would think, Never think of. I would have never thought of it before I started having the memories and God started showing me things that they could take a little tiny sig is that called sigil or sigil? I sigil, I believe. But it's it's a it's a it's a symbol. So imagine what they're putting on tattoos that people don't even know. Maybe just a little squiggle within the, the diagram. So many things. Yeah. I've watched people, ministers that get tattoos. Just and I've been praying and praying, God to help them, but they just keep going off cliffs. Yeah, you um, know, and I, I think it's one thing if they got them before they were saved. Yeah, a lot and then of them you, are now, but, but yeah, you like, can repent of that, and that, and I believe God would remove it. But once it's like uh, once you're a minister and people are telling you that there's something wrong with it, and you go and you get it in defiance, then that's really an open door. Well, I think there's so many open doors. That, that's why I'm telling you, we have to trust that we serve the God of impossibilities. Yep. And, and I know that, that he has with me removed objects and, 
and, and parasites and everything else. And we, we recently, because we talked to Vicki Joy Anderson, um, went through another parasite cleanse. Yeah. And so there's all kinds of things that, that we can do. But God's a miracle work in God. And if we, if we come to him and say, God, I didn't know any of this stuff. I didn't know, you know, it's, it's like when I, I thought about one time when I marched in a Halloween parade with Lisa, my youngest. You talk about stupid. <coughs> I pretty much dressed up like a, like a clown. And, and so look, at it, it's compiled. You go and do Halloween, which don't let these people on the internet tell you it's not pagan. It's pagan. You go and do Halloween thinking, oh, this is just a fun time for kids to dress up. Then you dress up to something that's hooked to <laughs> the Nephilim. And I dressed Lisa. I made her costume that, yeah. that year. Yeah. I, she, you know, I had her in and what's, what's crazy, that that's a druidic practice. And by dressing as these things, just like the jack-o'-lantern, uh, what that meant was whenever you put a jack lantern out in your house, you were telling the dark side, I am okay with what you're doing. I'm, I'm on your side, so leave me alone. And so there was almost, almost like sympathetic magic. Okay, I'm dressing like the occult world so that you'll identify me as a part of who you are so you're not going to come after me because I'm on your side. Doesn't work that way. <laughs> uh, and, and that's, I mean, it, it's crazy. Uh, even, I mean, we are bombarded constantly with advertising and everything else that has occult symbolism in it because they know it triggers something at the unconscious level within sinful man. Mm -hmm. Because that, that's an icon. So it's like, you know, on, on this computer I have an icon here. You press that, it activates something. Uh, whenever you receive an icon in and you don't plead the blood of Jesus between your eyes, what you see, and your ears, and what you hear, these things are basically creating buttons the devil can push in your life. Before I forget, I want to pray um, over this Austin Spare and then where his uh, spiritualist legacy... Sorry, I've got my, my tooth, my uh, fake tooth thing in, so I'm sounding like Sylvester. Sorry. And I'm having trouble reading. Um, the Thelemite author, Kenneth Grant, I want to ask God to forgive their sins yes. and anybody connected to them. All those years ago, Father, break the initial connection to these atrocities. Father, forgive their sins, the sins of everybody that's ever worked with them, the sins of uh, anybody that's in this right now that's using this against people. Father, the hidden knowledge. I'm asking that it would be revealed that every person that is in this, Father, that, it, that you would bring it to the forefront. And, and if they're in the pharmaceutical um, companies, wherever they are, Father, expose it. Expose it. We break that power by the blood of Jesus. It's evil. And Jesus came to destroy works of evil. We declare that that is going to be yes. destroyed. That those things, those, those symbols, if they're in our bodies, they're going to dissolve and they're going to be expelled by our bodies in the name of Jesus. We don't have to put up with this. And that's what Satan is so mad about. Everything's coming to light. We're finding out things we've not known before. I've been doing this a long time, and I still keep finding out things. You know, I just if, stay on my knees say, if, Father, if forgive us. If ministries that dealt with uh, UFO abductees that had implants, and they prayed in those implants, the bodies would reject them, and mm -hmm. those implants would come to the surface. Uh, if that if that works, in which we know it does, then we also know that if it's something microscopic, we can pray the same thing. Because I mean, That's from right. from the the micro dust and and everything that they're releasing into the atmosphere and everything else, we just we just need to pray. And and this this is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so Holy Spirit. Help keep your temple clean. Yeah, it has no right. We can declare yes. that. It has no right in the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Father, cleanse us. Cleanse us down to the DNA level. Uh, and also what God's been showing me, I don't understand all of it yet, but he's, he's been talking to me for about a year about the pattern that he has for us, which would be his like uh, divine design for each of us. And I've been seeing, I think it's connected, the counterfeit to this is connected to people that see auras. You'll have people in the occult and they'll see, well, within everything that Satan's done, he, it's the only way I know how to describe it is if you saw an imprint and it's made out of pixels, but instead of the original image of what is supposed to be there, the they pixels are messed it. out and the colors are way off. 
And so remember when uh, Henry Groover went, I, I think he died, didn't he, and was going... And God, to, God showed and him then the galaxy. God, God brought him back, but showed him that there was way more colors. And NASA confirmed this one. In, 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 in the atmosphere of planet Earth, we have eight colors that are a basic color hue. You get outside, you get outside the atmosphere, and it's at least 16. And so there's, there's a dimming down, if you will, uh, because of the atmosphere on, on planet Earth. Uh, and it, it goes theologically. We know that Adam was created in the image of God. When Adam sinned, the image of God was marred. Mm -hmm. And so all humanity, it's like there's that smudge, there's that, those pixels that are out of place to where the image of God is marred. Only in Christ, the Apostle Paul says, we're all predestined to one thing. Now, unlike what a lot of people say in the body of Christ, it's not to become a millionaire or whatever else. It is we are predestined to be conformed into the image of His Son. In other words, in Christ, we find that true image that all of us are called to be. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit is now working to restore that image. And, th th right. and this, this is a season, I think, especially as we're moving toward Hanukkah. Man, it's time to check, the, check out the temple to get it cleansed, to pray everything that we know to pray over, uh, and, and to cleanse our homes so that uh, there, there's nothing of Antiochus Epiphanes or that occultism or anything else in the temple of God, which we are, but only those things that he has sanctified. Well, and remember, when I first came out of my depression and where uh, I, there was a prophet that told me that God had uh, changed my bloodline. And I remember the day that I woke up and God had broken it. Everything looked different. The colors were so different. And I heard somebody else say that, 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 that God had, had done a miracle in their life and the colors were so different. Yeah. And so that's what I saw when God was showing me the, the pattern, the image, is the, the colors were even changed. And so what I'm asking God to do, Father, you see everything that they've done to get us away from, from your design. I ask you to forgive every sin that's involved in this. Yes. Every sin of every person that was used by the enemy, every entity. Father, I'm asking that you bring those entities yes. before your, your court for what they've done. Father, now we can see it. We're starting to see what they've done. If we see it, we can present it before your court and ask you to judge this, Father. Yes. L loose the victims of this. Cause the colored patterns to go back. You know, they, they've got that a particular uh, rainbow flag. There's, there's reasons that Satan's done all this. And so I'm believing that the colors are going to go back to how God created them. The designs are going to go back to how yes. God cre created them. And so, Father, we just ask that you'd loosen anointing to every person that's listening to us. Father, that you would, would restore us all so that we can flow and get rid, come out of Babylon, that this Babylonian system is not going to hold us anymore. Uh, we're not going to bow to it. And Father, now you've made it, you've made it clear so that we know what to pray. And once we ask forgiveness for the sins, the power cannot hold. Yes. And we declare your greatness. You're, you're able to do anything. We, we cry out for your miracle work and power to touch every individual, to get us back to that original design so that the temple can be cleansed so that they can't have access to us in Jesus name. Now one of the things I'm going to do in the uh, this episode description is I'm going to add links to a great interview that these guys did with Paul uh, Stobes on this and I'm also going to add the link to Bill's yeah. interview with Bill Snublin on Omega Man and, and Shannon's a great guy with Omega Man. I used to do their, a lot of episodes with him. And uh, glad to see that's still going. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was, it's, it's, uh, now the Bill Sneblin one is only audio, but it, you can still watch it on Rumble. And I'll get the links to that. We're, we're in a time that God, everything hidden is being revealed. It is. And, and some of it may be small, some of it may be big. But God is taking us step by step so that we can get, uh, we can become a sanctified people to be ready for His return, that we can yeah. be bond servants in the earth. Uh, with the right attitude, with a cleansed temple, and a divine purpose that he can, he can flow through greatly in this last days. Uh, guys, we'll see you next week. Keep pressing into the kingdom. Jesus is Lord, and heaven is moving in Jesus' name. Love you guys.
In the ancient plains of Shinar, an evil was born. The first world king, the prototype transhuman, the ultimate despot, Nimrod. In Babylon, the son of perdition devised the Shinar Directive, a plan to enslave humanity and make war against the God of Heaven. God's intervention at the Tower of Babel only delayed Nimrod's hellish plans. As the powers of Mystery Babylon gather to create the new Tower of Babel and to prepare for the Son of Perdition's return, Heaven is issuing a clarion call to the Remnant. The Shinar Directive will reveal the strategies of the enemy that will help you untangle yourself from them and become the victorious Church. It is time for the Remnant to wake up, discern the times, and be infused with Heaven's power to withstand the Shinar Directive by Dr. Michael Lake. Get your copy today at kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. Thank you for watching Biblical Life TV. We hope and pray that today's program edified you in the Word of God. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the Kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.